let's add an app host to our Azure instance of Curator. So I have the instruction here in front of me. They are very similar to the one we use for the console and for the manage host. Uh, but now we're going to select an app host. So I already click here and log in with my credentials into Azure. And I'm going to follow uh, these, uh, these steps. So I click here, get it now. And here from the pull down menu, the default is precisely the app host. So we click continue. And we are presented here with a screen where we need to put the, the, the parameters. Oh, actually, we click here, just create. And in here, where we need to put our parameters like the resource group, region, etc. One important consideration is the virtual machine name. Keep it short, because when this becomes a fully qualified name, if it exceeds, hits 64 or more, then your installation will fail and you will waste a great deal of time. So keep it short, maybe not as short as mine, but uh, remember to keep it uh, short. So that's my region. Now, next consideration, memory here. If you are going to be running several apps in your environment, give it plenty of memory. I wouldn't give it 16 gigabyte of memory. I definitely will go more because you may add more apps in the future. And if you grow them, uh, you you don't want to run out of space and then have to migrate all those apps and you know doing all that stuff. So keep that into consideration for logging. The secure ways doing SSH keys and I have done videos where I show how you, you do use keys to log in into these sites and all that. But uh, for convenience and speed, we're going to go with just a user ID and password. So I'm going to call this one JRabo test. And I'm going to put a password. At least they have some good uh, password string requirements for the for the password. Now it's important here that you select HTTPS as well. Okay. When you're done. Click here, review and create. It's going to present you with all the options you selected. If these are, it's fine. And we're going to click create. Now, this is going to take a, probably around 10 minutes or so to finish the deployment. So I'm pausing the video until that happens. Okay, that part completed. And the instruction calls. To click here on go to resource. Now this is the most important part of the installation. In here it asks us to select static address. Curator doesn't like dynamic addresses at all. So we start by clicking here in this public app address instead of being dynamic we select static make sure you click on save button and notice this message the associated virtual machine might be rebooted and then i have found out that it is being rebooted every, every time and if you don't wait enough long enough after you do the setup of these static addresses then your installation may fail because the machine up there is not fully up so make sure that when we finish setting up these uh, ip addresses that you go and get a cup of coffee or take take some time uh, for it, right? So now we need to click into overview and click on associated to link. So we go back here, we click here on overview in overview, and this is where they want us to click associated to, and we have a link here. Now, in this pane, you go here on the left where it reads IP configurations, and you're going to change that dynamic thing into static also. So you click Save, and you wait until in here it tells you that it has done so. And you're going to be using the static address if you are working on the same region that you installed the console. You use the static address when you will be attaching the the 
the private IP rather sorry so you use the private IP to attach the console uh, attach to the console the app host that we are creating right now and we will be using the public IP to SSH into the box so we get that message that's what we were expecting successfully done now we're going to click here on the breadcrumb into the image if you don't see this breadcrumb because you, you reloaded the page or something click on home and then you will be able to find your address there let's go back to the to the instructions now and this is what is uh, referring to that breadcrumb now in here in networking what you need to do in this place is you click here on networking is set up the firewall rules to make sure that you and only you can access that machine up there the way I have it set up in here taking any to any anyone can hit that box and in one of the previous videos that we did we showed that after we created our instance of curator there was already an IP from China trying to do login uh, trying password with the admin user ID so very important that you do this right again for the video we are going to skip that part because this will be specific to every networking environment you know make sure you have a, only the seeded ranges of the machine you will be using both for SSH as well as for the console should be the only ones that can actually uh, hit that that box every, everybody else should be denied so we go back here and we need to get back to that uh, uh, image again if you get lost click always home and go to the image that you want and we are gonna do connect now and in here we're gonna grab the actual command that we will be doing SSH into. So we're going to open a terminal. Actually, this is from a previous installation that I did, so let me start from scratch. We open a terminal and we paste that IP address. That is my static public IP to hit that box. I click yes. I'm going to uh, put the password here set up a password actually use the password that we set up before rather and we are in now the instructions call for the first thing to be done is to check the length of the host name because again if this thing hits 64 you're toast the installation will fail so we go to the terminal and we issue that command and we get 57 because again notice how it went from the short name that I put right up to 57 so you can hit that 64 very rapidly if you made that mistake unfortunately you need to start rewind the video and start all over again this is not we have not done that much uh, so far now we go back to the instructions it called for I'm gonna click here to get into the clipboard for running the setup of the app host as I mentioned to you I'm gonna paste that command but I'm not gonna hit enter I'm gonna go for a cup of coffee or something and I'm gonna wait just to make sure that the infrastructure in Azure is fully up after those machines were rebooted when we changed the uh, IP addresses from dynamic to static pause in the video and I'll be back okay so I was doing some other things and I'm ready to give this a go so I'm setting the password here oh that, that's actually the password with that we set up before later on at the end of this process we will have to set up the root password for the app host machine that we will create 
So this is going to take, uh, could take an hour, it depends on the resources uh, that you have allocated on the end. Uh, so this, this uh, takes a while, so I'm going to pause the video until this part completes. Now we need to change the password for the root of the app host. we are done. Now the instructions calls next for attaching this to the actual Curator console that we installed before. So we are done here. What we need to do is make sure that we get the public IP address, the, uh, the private static IP address and that's the one we're going to use to connect to the box. So we clip that one to, to attach the app host to the host, to the console. So we have that IP address 10.13. This is my curator system. As we see, I have one app running on the console. That's QDI one. We should see that one being migrated there. So we go into the admin tab to do that. The instructions call go into the admin tab, go into system and license management. Make sure you are here under system and you're going to do deploy action. You're going to add a host, which is precisely the app host that we have. We put the IP address in here, the password that we set up for that one. We repeat the password. We are not doing anything with NAT uh, because everything is in the same region. We are not doing any encrypt host connections. We click here Add. And this is going to be progressing. As you, we're going to be seeing some uh, actions progress here. I'm going to pause the video until that happens. So that completed. Took a while, but it completed well, and the app host looks active. Now you might be tempted to click here to change where the apps run, but let's make sure that we have the instruction call to and do deploy full configuration. So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna pause the video until that completes. So that deploy configuration finished. So we go back here to system and license management. And we click here now to migrate the app that I had on the console to the app host that we just installed. Well, actually, that, I was expecting that to take even longer than that. Let me close that. Let me actually reload the page to make sure that the QDI that I see from before is uh, still here. I need to put my license in here, and sure it is, my app migrated. So, uh, 